Hello, ShareTrek guys. Um, feeling way better today, and uh, this is Raj here. Just want to make a brief video to let you know the way the market is looking from my perspective and whether I regret selling or not. The first thing that jumps off my mind is that I definitely regret selling Microsoft. It seems to have a lot more juice left in it. Uh, but the market is consolidating, but I don't know for what. Is it consolidating to go up or is it consolidating to go down? So to talk more about this, let's get started. Welcome back friends. I would like to take you to our trading view platform and what you are looking at is a chart of Nasdaq futures which is mildly positive and you can see there's a huge consolidation out here and you can even say that it's a bullish pennant out here because that's what it looks like and if that's what it looks like that's how it's going to behave. Unfortunately for me I've already sold the shares but I think taking profit was the right thing for me because I don't want the stress of the situation. Uh, so if I was to look at it this way, it's already broken uh, past the pennant. We'll find out tomorrow. We'll get more information. However, what is contradictory is the fact that the MACD is almost ready to cross over the signal line to go to the bearish side. And the momentum has been flat, even though elevated. So we'll see what happens uh, tomorrow. And if we go to the indicators and look at QQQ, again, QQQ is consolidating. It's not able to pierce through this huge uh, area of resistance. It has not gone anywhere near it in the last few days. And also you can see the MACD is rolling over on top of the uh, signal line, ready to cross over to the bearish side. Momentum has also been a bit flat out here with sporadic ups and downs. Uh, but overall it's uh, range bound. There's only 0.26% movement in QQQ. And if you look at VIX, it has inched up again. Gradually, it's inching up 0.16%. Yesterday, it was 0.25%, I think. So it's gradually inching up. It's moving upwards. It's absolutely clear that it's moving upwards. So the chances that it's going to go further down and touch this green line is diminishing with every passing day when it moves upwards. So when the VIX moves upward, I think we can see the markets coming down. And S&P 500 also has been consolidating just a meager 10%, 0.10% move. So it also has got huge resistance waiting for it out there. Dow Jones has done much better than the others. It's done around 22%, 0.22%, but still it's a very small move uh, overall. And uh, again, here the MACD is moving towards the signal line. These are all daily candles. Now, if we were to look at the same thing from a weekly candle perspective, let me do that here one week and then move off and come back again. There is a bug in the system that it doesn't show the correct magnification. Yeah, okay. So here we are. And you can see that last two weeks we have been struggling to break through this huge area of resistance, which I marked out here. And also you can see that on a weekly basis, MACD is bullish, but momentum is flat. So it's very confusing for me, but you can see that the uh, volumes are starting to be a bit less, but that could also be because the week is not yet over. Uh, we are on Tuesday, so there's plenty of time to go. Uh, so we, we would probably see uh, better volumes in the rest of the week. Uh, but. Uh, I'm really, I would really regret having sold my shares if we break through this resistance and try to touch the target of 493.59. I was chicken because I had good profits. I didn't want to lose all of them and wait again uh, to book profits, so I did that. And then if we were to look at put uh, uh, call ratio, it's uh, kind of settled down into a more modest 0 0.978, so I'm not too worried about it. So intermittently, the bearish uh, sentiment wanes, and suddenly the bearish sentiment comes. This green candle is when I sold, so I was part of this bearish sentiment out there. We'll see who prevails in uh, long term. And when we look at uh, uh, stocks uh, that are above that 20-day average, we can see that it has come down again this week. It's gone down further. And if we look at a daily candle, you can see that more companies have dropped below their 20-day average. 
So the market is definitely moving in the direction uh, that I think it would. But there are some big index moving companies which are still holding it up and we'll find out who they are. Next, let's go into the FNGU. This is the one that I sold and it has recovered very smartly today. But notice that the MACD is turning towards the signal line ready to cross over. Momentum is also very strong but almost overbought. So it's got to consolidate. When it consolidates, it has the possibility to go up. But then we have a huge gap up out here which needs to be filled. So that kind of compensates for the bullishness. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm not having any regrets about FNGU. When it falls down, it will fall fast because it is triple X le leveraged. So I can always buy it back. So 1.5% uh, is not much. I still sold at a higher price than what it closed at today. So I'm okay with that. Meta is still going strong, but it's consolidating again. And uh, if you look at Microsoft, this is my biggest regret, having sold Microsoft. It seems very overextended, but it still continues to go. However, you can see that MACD is almost ready to cross over the signal line and RSI is overbought. So tomorrow, I think we'll definitely see some people selling Microsoft to book profits, the brave ones who stay down for so long. And then uh, if you look at Google, Google has improved a little bit, but again, MACD is moving towards signal line. So Apple, Apple has gained 0 0.32. See, all the gains are very anemic gains. It's not big gains to write home about. And we are still trending downwards at this point of time, and MACD is ready to cross over the signal line. So there is a bearish overtone out here in my opinion. And uh, let us go to have a look at our genomics uh, shares. And you will see that DNA did particularly well with a gain of 3.6%, which translates to 5 cents. But I think that it is uh, being supported by, by this line of support right now because earlier it was supported by this uh, resistance of the previous uh, bear channel, which I call as a superior bear channel that it's in right now. And it's got support here. So hopefully tomorrow we should see it start moving upwards towards 1.51 because it's highly beaten down. And uh, the momentum is also starting to move towards above average. So if it picks up that uh, momentum, then we can see some improvement in the price for uh, DNA. And uh, PSCB still managed to stay above uh, the bear channel. So this bear channel uh, support line uh, resistance line has now become a support so that's what uh, gives the support to PSEV and if you were to look at Illumina, Illumina is um, uh, consolidating nicely for a breakout in my opinion uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens the momentum still needs to pick up a lot uh, before it can break up and I think it has got another five or six days to do that and if you look at Caribou Biosciences it is still within the long-term bear channel which I have drawn here so it is still under it and hopefully tomorrow if it breaks through this bear channel uh, then it will have to face the resistance at 6.27 overall looking very healthy but RSI is almost overbought and our momentum uh, is uh, is pretty pretty good and uh, the MACD is still bullish. Another share to look at is Editas. It's consolidating like crazy. There is a huge uh, uh, up, upward uh, a possibility based purely on technical. So if I put this as a resistance here, and if I take this as a... <coughs> if I to draw a pennant for this, this is what it looks like, which indicates that tomorrow we should see Editas breaking out of this uh, pennant and move upwards, uh, because that's what the technicals say. However, I'm really concerned about the uh, overheated RSI. Everything else looks good for editors, so hoping for the best there. And when it comes to ArcG, it is still struggling with this resistance here at 28.02, uh, which it needs to break through. Uh, momentum is also flat, and uh, MACD is moving towards the signal line, showing a certain amount of uh, weakness. If you look at Bluebird, Bluebird is having severe problems with this huge area of uh, cell pressure, and uh, it's not able to move above. Uh, it's been flat today. Uh, and uh, it started lower and went up. So it, we have a green candle. But overall, it's still on the bullish sector. And uh, basically, the Padufa date of uh, December is what is keeping it afloat right now. Uh, maybe it is uh, going to be something where when the news comes in that um, the therapy is approved, probably by that time, Bluebird would have reached its highest price and then it will start falling. Uh, we'll have to watch this closely. I have around 600 of Bluebird. I'm not able to sell uh, good 
covered call with uh, good margins. So I'm still waiting for that opportunity. And uh, if you were to look at uh, CRISPR therapeutics, CRISPR therapeutics formed a tight uh, a bullish pennant and it's already broken out above it. And today it came down, but it was supported by 70.68, which is the line of support out there, which comes from the past. So I think uh, it's looking good out there, but RSI has to cool down for it to make further progress. So till such time, I think this uh, 70.68 should be the support. So friends, coming back to my question, do I regret selling uh, just Microsoft? Other than Microsoft, I do not regret selling anything else. Uh, everything else I think is moving in the right direction. I could be wrong. Uh, the cup and handle pattern might prevail, in which case uh, I would have lost a lot of gains. But I am still happy because whatever I would have lost, I have already gained as much. So whatever profits I had, I had exactly the same amount to gain if I had held on to it. But the risk on the downside was that all my profits would be wiped out uh, if I didn't sell. So I took the safer option. I chickened out and I sold most. So I'm waiting for the best. And uh, today we have some bad news. Uh, Charlie Munger has passed away. And um, uh, it's um, the end of an uh, uh, era. Uh, and uh, we'll have to see uh, how Berkshire Hathaway continues. Berkshire lost a modest 0.25% on the CDR side. Um, I would have wished that uh, Charlie Munger got a better send-off with at least a positive out there. So with that, my friends, I would like to bring this video to an end. And I'm going to bed. Bye for now.